Welcome to Safety and Health in Engineering Unit 2, Occupational Safety and Health Management System. In this unit, we will learn about the concepts of safety management. We will also learn about the establishment of a safety and health committee. And finally, we will learn about the roles of management in occupational safety and health committee. In Malaysia, there are approximately 415,000 registered employers and 8.9 million employees. A continuous and systematic approach is needed to manage safety and health at the workplace. Detailed info on the implementation of occupational safety and health management systems can be seen according to MS1722 guideline by Department of Safety and Health Malaysia. Accidents can be seen as cost to the organization and this cost can be divided into two types of costs, which is the immediate cost and the unforeseen cost. Immediate costs such as the loss of time, damage to property and equipment, loss of efficiency and cost of substitution goods and services. Whereby for unforeseen costs, we have substitution of injured workers, loss of commitment and self-assurance of employees involved in accidents. Occupational safety and health management can contribute to the worker's safety and protection from hazards, the elimination of work-related injuries, inabilities, diseases, near misses and fatalities. Visible commitment and involvement from top and senior management are the most important elements in all system proposals. Safety management must be accompanied by a key role with clearly assigned responsibilities and performance monitoring at various levels of management. Common proactive programs such as hazard identification, workplace monitoring, inspection, reporting and investigation of incidents, audit and surveys and the collection of data for analysis prevent accidents from occurring. Health and safety policies and procedures will be formulated for training programs targeted at managers and employees. There are several management key responsibilities regarding occupational safety and health management system. Top management involvement and work organization, consulting employees, assigning representatives for health and safety assistance, adequate supervision and monitoring, provide information, guidelines and training, monitor and review conditions for best practices. Everyone is responsible for safety and health in a workplace but management in particular has more responsibility than employees. OSH management system is part of an organization's overall management system used to manage OSH risks. Managers have direct control and can give instructions. Managers must take proactive approach in determining responsibility and accountability in controlling safety and health issues. Managers can influence safety performance by setting policies that require high safety performance, providing resources to achieve the aims of all policies, encouraging and supporting local managers, supervisors and senior employees for efforts to achieve high standards of safety performance, demonstrating high commitment towards the development of a safety culture in the workplace. It is a basic duty for an employer to follow the Malaysian Occupational Safety and Health Standard OSH, MS 17222011. This establishment is a requirement adapted from the International Labour Organization Components, ILO OSH 2001, and based on the quality management system elements of the Deming Wheel. The primary components of OSH MS 1722 are policy, organizing, planning, and implementation, evaluation, and action for improvement. Every organization should have a clear policy for the management of safety and health to ensure that everyone in the organization is aware about safety and health aims and objective. A good policy should be clearly written statement of the organization position regarding safety, health and environment. Identify who is responsible for safety and health performance. Identify the sources of experts competent with safety and health knowledge signed by most senior person or persons in the organization.
be prominently displayed and up to date. The employer should have overall responsibility and accountability towards the protection of workers' safety and health and organizing occupational safety and health activities. Structures and processes of safety and health must be well established. Necessary competence and training should be provided among the workers and all occupational safety and health works documented. The element of communication is included in the organizing requirement to ensure that information, ideas, documents and any relevant matters are received, considered and given a response. A policy will only remain as words on paper until the organization sets up the plan and monitors the requirements. The plan begins with the initial review carried out by competent persons or consultants. This initial review will become the basis for making decisions regarding the implementation of the OSH management system. System planning, development and implementation are important to support the requirement of national laws and regulations and continual improvement in the OSH performance. A consistent OSH policy based on initial or subsequent reviews will help to establish measurable OSH aims and objectives. Hazards and risks to workers' safety and health should be identified and assessed on an ongoing basis. Hazard prevention and protective measures should be implemented to minimize risk, change the working management environment, and identify any potential accidents to provide necessary prevention, preparedness, and response. Evaluation consists of three main components, performance monitoring and measurement, audit, and management review. The selected performance indicators should be measurable according to the size and nature of activity in the organization and the respective occupational safety and health objectives. Monitoring activities should be developed, established and reviewed at all levels in the management structure. Proper investigation of work-related injuries, ill health, diseases and incidents needs to be carried out and recorded for continual improvement activities. The audit includes an evaluation of the organization's OSH management system elements, whether its elements are in place, if it is adequate and effective in protecting the workers, and if it prevents accidents or incidents. The arrangements of preventive and corrective action should be established and maintained. This arrangement should include identifying and analyzing the root causes of any non-conformities with relevant OSH regulations or management arrangements, initiating, planning, implementing, checking the effectiveness of corrective and preventive action, including changes to the OSH management itself. Continual improvement of the relevant elements of the OSH management should cover the whole system of the organization. The safety and health performance of the organization should be compared with others in order to improve the safety and health conditions. The conceptual sub-elements in Occupational Safety and Health Management System can be seen as the following table. That's it for this time. Next topic, we will talk about the Safety and Health Committee Establishment.